Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest gruesome and grotesque video. As always, I just do these videos randomly when I come across an article that I read online or something through the Google News app that I feel merits posting here within this playlist, such as the case with this rather unusual, pretty grotesque story that just occurred here in Texas, and it involves the apparent remains, skeletal remains, of someone that was found in a home. As it turns out, it was apparently the father that had kept the skeletal remains of their son in their kitchen for the past four years. The more you think about it, in fact, the more I was looking into this information and then wondering how this happened, you realize again that this takes a rather grotesque bit of turn. But yes, it just happened just the other day, at least with regards to the discovery. In fact, you're looking at a picture of the incident here, and essentially it's this. It's a David McMichael who was charged with abuse of a corpse because of keeping the skeletal remains of his son in his home. So let's go ahead and let's share that information here. And unfortunately, this is one of those stories where there's no real winners, if you could even call it that. This is a tragedy that's pretty much all around. You know about that more here in a minute. So here's essentially what occurred. David McMichael was living there at an area in Texas called New Boston. I actually had to look it up. I had no idea where this was. It's just another one of the myriad of tiny Texas towns scattered throughout the state. And in this case, it's more towards the Texarkana area. If you don't know where that is, that's more like towards the east, northeast side of Texas. Tiny town, again, a population of about 4,000. And that's where this father lived there with his son, or at least that's what the idea was. His son was a guy by the name of Jason. A little bit of info, even though it's brief, more details are coming about apparently as the story unveils. But apparently, during the last part of Jason's life, he had had something, something involving him. I don't know if it was an accident or I don't know if it was some kind of natural born condition or something else that just came about afterward that deteriorated uh, with him over the years. But eventually, as family members have stated afterward, Jason eventually became incapacitated. Again, I don't know exactly how in terms of what incapacitation, but it was something that involved round the clock 24-7 type care. And that's where the father came in, David McMichael. He was someone that apparently took care of his son during this time period. And then it was the last couple of years, back in May or so of 2018, probably even sooner, that that was the last whereabouts associated with Jason. For all intents and purposes, the family and others just thought that Jason was living there with his father in that home in New Boston, just as is, peacefully secluded, maybe more of an isolationism a bit of stance, but still just living there. But later on, we all know that the story changed. Somewhere along the way, a family member was alerted to a potential change uh, that happened with Jason. I don't know if that change involved the news of his death or if it was just a random welfare check, something along the lines of, hey, we haven't seen Jason in a long time. Let, let's have someone check on it. This may even involve reaching out to the father, David McMichael, to try to see what was going on and maybe having no response. That's where the uh, the um, the actual welfare check was uh, cited. Again, I don't know the details on it. I'm just going by what makes the most sense. But what we do know is, yes, the police went over to that home. And this was a home that was located on 1200 block of South Merrill. If you happen to live there in New Boston, who knows, maybe uh, there in your neighborhood, this is exactly what was happening there. When the authorities went there, they checked that area, they knocked on the door, they went up and they asked the father if they knew why they were there at his home. And he stated pretty much bluntly, right then and there, he stated, Yes, and it's because he has a body in his kitchen. He pretty much, for lack of a better term, confessed right there. Like he knew that there was something, that the police were there for a reason, and that he had a body in his kitchen. Now, we don't know exactly what the father did, if anything. There's no, uh, let's say, linkings yet to Jason Seth being courted to him. So all of this stuff is just pure speculation, and he is presumably innocent at this point with regards to anything and everything that occurred to that situation. But the body 
was definitely there. And that's when the police discovered it and they realized somewhere along the way that, yes, he had died and he had died from a while back. It was in May 2018. In fact, the father had told him as such. And so if you do the math, that's almost four years ago. So the reason I wanted to include it here in this gruesome and grotesque playlist is because of this. And, and again, um, the father stating that he died of natural causes and everything seems to point to that as so far there is an examination that's being done, forensics and an autopsy to try to determine the true cause. But again, all of this is just pure speculation as to how he died. But considering that he died there and this was left in the kitchen, again, everything seems to point to that. It's not like the 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 poor young man died let's say in an area like in his bedroom or the basement or anywhere else and then was moved to the kitchen the presumption is that he died there in the kitchen then it seems like the father just left him there as is again all of this is just alleged but at this point that's what the speculation seems to be because if the body was left there and hadn't been moved there can you imagine that can you imagine the body there just being left slowly decaying over time until finally it's pretty much just some form of skeletal remains can you imagine living there passing by that body passing by the area there each and single day just basically waking up cooking something in the kitchen cleaning the area around the home something along those lines like eventually after a certain point, who knows after how many uh, dozens and dozens and eventually hundreds of days, it would get to the point again where that body would just be skeletal remains. All of that was happening with the father living there. I think he was the only one there too. It would have to have been just him by himself. But yes, he was just living there, letting the body just go to its its state of of skeletal remains isn't that just gruesome right just the idea that something like this was just nonchalantly letting it be there um and then having that happen afterward it's like the stuff you kind of see in movies now i mentioned earlier that this could be just 100 percent a situation where nobody wins just an unfortunate tragedy because the father if, if all indications point to this to be true, like he was someone that seemed to have cared for his son, again, 24-7 up until the point of death. So imagine his shock. He probably wanted to leave that body there as something like a remembrance, something that occurred with his son and not have his son be taken away, uh, so to speak, and then not having the chance to see him, quote unquote, on, on a regular basis. I mean, imagine the mental attitude of something like that, the tragedy and the sadness of someone to basically do that and leave that as skeleton remains as is just to have the sun close by. Very sad situation. There's also some more drama apparently with some of the other family members. In fact, you're looking at some screenshots there. I've, ex um, why, I've put up some of the uh, information kind of secluded just to protect some of the names involved. But yes, this is some of the family members posting more information about what has occurred. All of this, again, is preliminary. All of this is just something that is still under investigation. But a lot of this is coming out of the father's own mouth. So a lot of indications, again, that, that stuff like this, that he's going to get in trouble. In fact, the police have already charged him with uh, something on lines of 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 a case like something of with regards to skeletal remains or i think it was called something on lines of abuse of a corpse now whenever someone dies you of course have to take care of them uh, uh, in, a, in a standard way like either cremation or some kind of burial but in this case uh, he didn't do that and so that's where the police are going with but still pretty sad story no when it comes to this here you have the son Something happened to him, no indication what it was, but it required him to be cared for 24-7. And you had the father presumably doing all of this. And then somewhere along the way, the son died of natural causes. And according to the father, it was May 2018. And again, he may have been so grief-stricken that he decided to just leave the son's body there, as is in the kitchen. Where else would it have come from, right? Where else would he have moved it? And then when that happens, the body just stayed there for the next four years, slowly deteriorating away until it's just pretty much skeletal remains, just all around just gruesome stuff. But if anybody has any more info, anything else I might have missed, then please post those comments below. And again, I have to mention that all of this is just 
uh, most of the information is just speculation. And then there's a lot of things that the father could be innocent of until the court decides later on. This is just, again, the info that's being presented at this very moment. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care.